Hi, everybody. Welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. And in this video, I'm talking to Elaine Pence. Uh, now, you might remember there was that derecho event that hit Nauvoo and Springfield, Illinois. And I took note of that. Um, I, someone had actually brought that up. And so that's how it got on my radar. And we went through the details and stuff like that. We noted that Springfield is the capital city of Illinois. And I'm, I'm keeping track of, you know, capital cities. But the fact that it hit Nauvoo, I think, makes it even more, I don't know, of a sign. I feel like it means something. And so I had initially covered that event in one video. And then later on, I stumbled upon an article where there was this story where they interviewed Elaine. And uh, there was a pioneer trek that was going on at the time with uh, the youth. And so we we went over what was said in the story, but I, I wanted to take it even further and see if I could get I could reach Elaine. And so I have. And so we're going to get the, the full story. We're going to talk about Nauvoo uh, as well, not just the derecho, but things going on in Nauvoo. So it's going to be really good. So thanks for coming on, Elaine. And uh, how long have you been living there in Nauvoo? It will be two years in October. OK. And where where did you come from before that? Virginia. Okay. And what, what made you decide to move to Nauvoo? Uh, well, both my husband and I are Virginians, and we had neither one been to Nauvoo. I do have pioneer ancestors that lived here, mm -hmm. uh, and so we always wanted to come. Uh, a couple of summers ago, we had to go to Provo to help our daughter with a project. And we decided driving home that we would come through Nauvoo and take a, a little tour. We had a friend here. And so we stayed with them for a night. And as we were driving around and soaking in uh, the history in the temple, um, the spirit spoke very clearly. And I couldn't not say it out loud anymore to my husband who was driving. I said, we're going to move here. Oh, wow. Well, and, uh, how did he react to that? Um, you know, he, he didn't jump right on it, but uh, it, it really didn't take him long. I think by the time we got on the road a little ways, we were talking about how we could make that happen. Our youngest daughter had just left home. Uh, we had, uh, we lived in, uh, at that time, we, we lived in a little town called Buena Vista, Virginia, and that's where Southern Virginia University is. For those that are familiar with, it's an LDS college, and our youngest son was still attending there, but not living at home. So we thought, well, here's a good time for us to uh, decide what we're going to do next. Uh, we didn't need to be in Buena Vista anymore. We loved it, uh, but uh, we had two other children that still lived in Virginia. We thought we'd get closer to them, perhaps. But when we drove through Nauvoo, we knew that that's where the Lord wanted us now. And we're learning why we're here. And um, it's been pretty exciting. We renovate houses. So um, we have two properties that we're renovating. And one of them is the on the way we, we call it the farm. 13 acres is all. But they, they don't call that a farm in Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you just have 13 acres, but we call it the farm because it's the most land we've had. So, yeah, uh, well, this is good. where the this is where the um, youth were supposed to trek to. I'm a real estate agent and I had uh, worked with a, a man from Missouri. And uh, he uh, called me uh, earlier this year and asked if there was a chance that their youth group could come and trek on our property. And I said, well, no, how much of a trek you could get out of 13 acres. Um, and the way it's laid out has a lot of trees. Uh, we have about five open acres. And uh, so he said, uh, no. So I said, well, why don't you, I found out that they were camping in the campground near our house in town. I said, well, there, it's about six mile hike. So if you want to go the back way to our property, you could do your trek and then end up at the property. And so that's what they did. And they had these beautiful hand carts. And they uh, 
you know, we're winding around. There's some gravel roads, some dirt roads. It's very rural uh, out there. And I had a closing that morning and decided that I was going to go the back way and ride past them and see, you know, because I wanted to see how it was mm -hmm. going and what it looked like. And as I I passed by, I spoke to a few people and said, you're coming to my place. Excited for you to be here. And um, and I went on. But if you notice, there's the one picture I sent. And you can see how many kids there were in that picture. Let me see if I can um, have pull that. that up really quick. Um, I'll put it on the screen just a minute. I, I got a couple a couple sets of pictures from you, but they're only showing the house. Um, um, you didn't get the one with the kids. No, I'm not seeing that. But do you want me to pull up the pictures right now? Um, not not of the house. Okay. The um, it's too bad because that's a great picture because they show the kids. It's from behind them. And you see this huge group of kids because it was 250 people, leaders and youth, um, going down the road and you can see them all and you can see the clouds coming in the distance. And we had no idea, you know, how bad this was going to be. Yeah. And, um, and I, I think I even said something about, oh, you know, you guys better hurry up. You're going to get caught in the rain. You know, it looks like we're going to get rained on. And I headed back to the house, uh, on, on to the house. And as soon as I pulled up and got out of my vehicle, my husband came from, he's working on our daughter's house. She's building on our acreage. Or it's net, we are selling some of it to her. Anyway, uh, they're working on her house and they see the storm coming and they think, well, we better stop for a little bit and see, you know, so we don't get caught in the rain. And we hit here about the same time and my alarm goes off on my phone. And I look down and it says, take cover now. I mean, there was no- Was there any like warning before, before that? Like a severe uh, thunderstorm warning or anything like that? Not that we saw ahead of time. Um, and that's the way it's been lately. Like I'll look at the weather for during the week and for next week we saw some 108 degree weather that was mm -hmm. supposed to happen and now it's in the 90s so it changes so quick i don't think yeah. anybody can predict the weather anymore yeah yeah no <laughs> it's um, just it's just doing like, what it's going to do like last month and maybe the month before i was surprised at how many like severe thunderstorm warnings we had and how it, just, it was just like sudden and sometimes it was a little bit expected other times it's just like what and then Another time, you know, oh, there's a tornado watch. No, there's a tornado warning. And so we go to down to the city hall over here to take shelter. But yeah, yeah, it's pretty uh, crazy. Well, someone had asked me after the derecho, uh, were we sorry we left Virginia? And I said, well, no, but, you know, it's kind of crazy, but it is happening all over the world. And then I checked mm -hmm. uh, Facebook or something and saw my friends talking about the tornado warning in Virginia. So it's everywhere. Yeah. I did that video where we were talking about <laughs> Montpelier, uh, Vermont, how there was that flooding in. There was an article that talked about how there's no safe place anymore because uh, Vermont is a relatively safe place, but no, not even there. There's no safe place. There's we not don't know. It's, it's the last day. <laughs> yeah. So, and we just don't know, you know, what to expect next. We just need to be prepared. Yeah. So, but anyway, so we get this uh, notification and then we hear the alarm somewhere go off, a big, loud alarm. And we could hear it all the way out here. And I'm sure it was coming from Nauvoo and we're five minute drive from Nauvoo out here. Mm -hmm. So anyway, my husband and I said, well, let's get, get those kids in here. We both just jumped in our vehicles and he had a truck and a trailer and I have a minivan so we just took off and went and I rolled down my window and said drop your uh carts in the ditch and get in <laughs> and and oh they were they didn't know yet you know because it hadn't really hit yet and I really hadn't gotten it out of my mouth very long before I mean it was on us it came so fast it was amazing I mean 
I guess, you know, it was 120 mile an hour winds and I guess it was coming at us that fast. And um, and just as a reminder, everybody, if you didn't watch the other derecho videos or you don't know what a derecho is, it's uh, it's basically it's almost like an inland hurricane. It's not a hurricane, but the wind speeds are hurricane force. Hurricane force, uh, like for category one starts at I think it was like 74 miles per hour. So once you get to that point or above, um, then you're getting into these like different cat uh, hurricane categories. So you said 130. Is that what 20. it was? It was 120 is what we were told afterwards. That okay. That's what it was out here. It was like 80 miles per hour in town, just mm -hmm. five you know, minutes down the road. Uh, but we got hit harder out here. And so um, a bunch of those kids jumped in the back. We never really knew how many, but it filled the back of his trailer. Uh, they just jumped in and uh, he turned around and started heading back. and. I couldn't see by then and I had was having a hard time turning around and the kids started they took off and started running uh because not all of them could get in my van so they just took off running and got into this old uh shed in somebody's at somebody's farm it was wide open and uh so they ran into there. And so I, I turned around. It took me a while to get turned around. And I started heading back and I saw three men. And I said, do you want to get in? So they hopped in and it ended up being the state president, uh, one of the youth leaders and a young man who was leaving in just a couple of days for his mission. So they got in the van with me and I started creeping towards the house and um I the visibility was gone and I told the guys I said I don't know if I'm staying on the road or not what do you want to do and the state president said let's stay still let's stay put so we stayed put we didn't want to open our doors or anything and as we found out later um a room behind me here because I'm out at the farmhouse a room behind this wall um is that we're I'm at the front of the house uh it took out two windows in that room in the front and one on the side and everything in that room got sucked out oh my gosh well, not the furniture but I mean even the fitted sheets and the mattress cover got sucked really? off the bed and everything was out way way out in the yard wow that was in that room it was crazy and so if we had opened the car doors, <laughs> yeah, it would have been bad. That would have been bad. And, and so I, we just sat there. We didn't really know how long it was 20 to 30 minutes that we sat there uh, and wondered if we were going to take flight or, you know, if we were going to live through it. Uh, yeah. Cause if you had opened the door, like, obviously that would have, um, affected the aerodynamics of the van and absolutely something bad probably and that must have been a really long 30 minutes it was and what's interesting is out here is not the greatest reception on my phone and when it's overcast I can rarely get good connection to anybody and I was sitting in the car just wanting to know wanting my family to know where I was <laughs> mm -hmm. and wanting to hear from them where they mm -hmm. were and what was happening. And I know I'd sat there at least 15 minutes and we were just silent in the car. I know we were all just praying. And I know I said a couple of times, well, we're in the Lord's hands and, and that's all. We just knew we were in the Lord's hands. And so uh, as we sat there quietly, my phone rang and I answered it. And it was my daughter who was here, the one that's building the house. And uh, she, you know, she got through and we chatted. We were able to talk and, you know, she said they got everybody in the cellar safely. Everybody was safe in the cellar. Everything seemed to be OK here at the house. They didn't know that we'd lost the garage and the damage that had happened. They did know because as soon as my husband got into the 
yard, got to the house, he drove into the yard and pulled up right next to the door so that all they had to do was run. Tori, my daughter, Tori had the door open to the side. Everybody jumped out and ran into the porch and she showed them how to get into the cellar. And um, my husband had just shut the door when he heard the loud crack and this, we have a massive tree right over here and a huge limb came off of it and smashed my husband's truck and trailer right well, where they hit. While we pull up that picture, because that's one of the pictures that you, uh, yeah. that you had, um, let me see. Right here, right? Well, don't see it yet. Oh, let's see. says your screen is loading ah uh, and now it's all like freezing up don't worry i'll i'll edit this part out okay might be having maybe, a... maybe you can add the picture in Dang it. i can't even uh it's like my whole thing is like frozen my my entire browser can you still hear me i can see and hear you and the screen next to us says Christian Homestead has started screen sharing. <laughs> no picture. This is a big bummer. Okay. So if I could, if, okay, what just happened? Ah, I think is it's it showing it now. Yep. There. Okay. That's the inside of the garage where one of the garage doors, two of the garage doors came off of that garage. Here, let me go back here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so here it is. The, the, this is what you were just talking about, and uh, it looks like there's a lot that came down on the truck and the trailer, right? And and it hit the tower next to the house and hit some of the house there. Um, oh but yeah, you can right see here. the wind blowing the tree, and see it isn't even. They still have visibility. No, this is after. That's right. This is after. What am I saying? Duh. These are pictures he got after. He wouldn't have been out there during. <laughs> taking yeah, this so picture. immediately after he closed mm -hmm. the door, that's when essentially this all. Took yeah, that door out. right there. Yeah, they ran in that door and and that happened immediately. You see the back window is smashed. Yeah. The door was actually smashed open. I don't think you can see it. The, like that the driver's door. side? Uh huh, and uh, and you know, oh, yeah, you right can see there, it like right here. It looks like it's yeah, it looks like it's like crooked. Uh -huh, or kinda... It's open and it's it broke it, and the uh, so he had sides on that trailer. There were big tall sides on the trailer, and it protected the the kids as they came. But you can see one's fallen over in the trailer and one's laying on the ground. Oh, this one right here, that's what this uh, is? That's one, like of, one the of the sides from the trailer. Jeez Louise. Yeah. Uh, okay, should we go to another picture? Sure. Okay, that was a single car garage that was older, and we were storing furniture in it for our daughter, <laughs> who's oh, building no. the house. Yeah. And um, And so we lost that one that i i don't know how i would handle this situation i <laughs> i've had a lot of setbacks this year but nothing uh this bad oh is this there's the room, the room, room i was about? telling you about and see how the sheets and everything are gone off the bed yep. and you can see debris splattered around on the door yeah and uh most there are two i see those two curtains there but most of the curtains were out in the yard and i don't know how those stayed oh my God. but um everything else was gone Go to the next one here. Oh, is that that the, the same? That's just uh, the, the furniture that some of the furniture that was in that uh, okay, garage. That's it for the, this series of photos. That's Let's that, go to okay. the next one over here. So the garage. That was a three car garage, and two of the garage doors came down. Everything else was okay there, but we have other outbuildings and every one of the outbuildings lost doors, all the doors. It's so crazy how every door was sucked in. 
-hmm. on every one of the buildings or blew through and and then parts of roofs came off of the buildings too and we were you know we had storage this you know my husband uses as a workshop um and and we had things stored in that bay right there yeah um it's one of the outbuildings that's the oldest shed and it peeled back that and you know we didn't have pictures of all of it but there were other parts missing things missing and things blown over inside that's really too bad i really like uh the look of corrugated metal and uh -huh. this is a good looking building to me and that's it's that's okay. really upsetting <laughs> yeah so you got this the power is... right here yeah yeah, we lost power. We were without power out here for uh, a week and a half, almost two weeks. Really? Out here, yeah. That but we had a generator time. and we had, well, uh, so we have public water here, but because it's an old farm, I, the house was built in 1890. And so uh, it still has a well and we could use the well water during that time good but <clears throat> must have been really nice having those generators uh during that absolutely. time absolutely it was a gosh it was a blessing yeah there's the one of the garage doors oh yeah this is like the other one that we didn't see in the mm -hmm. other that's the picture. other one you can see a v vehicle in there and then uh you can see the that's the tree the big limb fell off of right there all from this tree right here. Uh huh. And on the other side of the house, to the left of that picture, to the left of the down garage, mm -hmm. you can see the another tree. You can just see part of it. That was a whole massive tree that came All down. This right here. And that's where my garden was. <laughs> oh dang it! <laughs> and uh. we on the behind. Sorry, to the right of the three car garage. There on the right, mm -hmm. we had an orchard of apple trees. And uh, we lost three of them. Just out of how many, like how many trees total? Uh, we only had four apple trees and one apricot tree. And three of the apple trees totally uprooted and blew across the, the yard. Oh, my goodness. That's how powerful the wind was to <laughs> take those trees up and move them that far. It's really bad. Yeah, it's like you you might as well have been hit by a tornado or or, or of course a, a right. Hurricane. It was it was a hurricane. It was definitely yeah. a hurricane. More than that. <laughs> Let's see. Now I wanted to show you that because that's less than or about a mile from our house out here, and that's what happened to that house. Oh, this this is uh, somebody this, else's house, this is not a an outbuilding. House. Yeah. Okay. No, this is a neighbor's house. It's on the river road. So it's uh, the river is there's the road is between that house and the river. So our mm -hmm. our house is back off the road a mile mm -hmm. in in farm area in farmland. And that house is on the corner of the river road facing the river. And wow. and that's what a lot of of. Uh, houses out here you know had similar damage so we felt really blessed and i believe it's because we had those kids in our cellar you know yeah and i think i think it was a miracle in fact and i believe that's why that shed that the kids were in didn't go down because the building next to it did oh gosh yeah i'm going to show the video so everybody check this out That is horrifying. That's what it looked like when I was sitting in my vehicle. Yeah. Let me turn this down. Say that one more time. Oh, I said that's what it looked like when I was sitting in my vehicle. Yeah, like visibility is visibility. Uh, nearly zero. Yeah. And you can see strong winds. And uh, yeah, that somebody, is. I think somebody's is, sitting there with their hand up the whole time calm in the storm i don't know <laughs> but well, you know there's a lot of praying the... going on in that in that building yeah absolutely all right and i have 
I have actually uh, the story that she posted on Facebook. Um, and I could share some of that with you because she talks about the miracle that it was. Uh, she, this woman uh, was a leader and she had her baby with her because pioneers would have had their children. So she brought her baby along and the kids were taking turns, taking care of the baby. And uh, the baby ended up in the back of my husband's trailer with the kids and the mother ended up in the barn. She didn't know what was happening to yeah. her child. And so, you know, she was in a panic and the children, the kids in the basement were, there's a picture of them in my basement holding the baby in the cellar. It's a cellar. It's not a basement. Uh, there's a picture of them. And I think I sent that to you where they're in the cellar and they're holding the baby. And then there's a picture of her when it was all over, she came back here and took a picture with me because she was so grateful that to come back and find that her baby was safe. Okay, so that's in the cellar. We had, at, we actually have that set up with beds and pillows and everything because of tornado warnings and stuff. And so uh, they're sitting on a bed and there's the little one and they yeah. were taking care of them. And then this is afterwards, they're singing here. Um, zoom around and show the outside now afterwards. This is where they were. And then here's me and the mom. And see how big those limbs are? It's crazy. Yeah, those are big. Yep. Yeah. I'm sure and, she was so relieved once that yeah. once she had her baby back. Yeah. We were all worn out by the ground when we saw it showed that one. And here's the one I was telling you about. Now, I was thinking about this this morning. You see them walking into the storm. Mm -hmm. Talking about a picture that represents the last days. Our youth are walking into the storm. And it's a, it's a very fitting uh, image and story because of, of that, you know, walking toward, you know, the second coming and then uh, finding safety. And uh, to the extent, you know, it, it almost fits the scriptures perfectly where it talks about that even the righteous will hardly escape, but escape they did. And uh, they escape were safe. They did. And we all feel I, when I was sitting after, after it was over and I thought back about sitting in the van with those three men, I wondered which one of us was the reason why we lived. <laughs> if it was just one of us in that van that had to live or, or what, you know, just oh, never I'm sure it was all of you. But sure. uh, it was a, quite the experience. Yeah. Well, I'm glad I'm glad that everyone ultimately ended up safe um cuz no one got hurt, right? Uh, just damaged right. property yeah. and just damaged property. Um which is unfortunate but but again, at least nobody got hurt, nobody died. Um I don't know. I I find it I find it really incredible that this happened i i take it as a sign of the times and uh i'm just glad that you're here to to tell the story um now i, I did want to talk a little bit about navu because uh, when we had spoken on the phone uh we were talking about how you've noticed a lot of people uh coming to that area right Right. Well, when we moved here, there had already been, and I hate to say numbers because I'm not the person to remember the numbers. My husband is good at that, but um, quite a few families had already moved here enough that when we moved here in October, just two weeks previous, they had divided the wards and redistributed redistrib the, the lines because there were so many new people that had moved here. And since then it's continued and people have been coming here on their own. So just a, a, about a month ago, maybe a little uh, more than a month ago now, our state 
presidency called a meeting of the Nauvoo first and third wards. There's not a second ward, and that's because that used to be a missionary ward. It no longer exists. So there's a first and third ward, and then a, right across the river from us, because we're right on the river, is Keokuk, Iowa, and Fort Madison, Iowa. And they were small branches. So the state presidency redistributed the lines again to take the outlying areas and move them into the units across the river and they created two wards. And so now we have, you know, four wards right here um, close by. Now I, I'm a real estate agent. And so um, I was sitting in this meeting listening to the state president and when he spoke uh, he talked about the dividing of the lines and how he knew this was going to be change is always hard it's going to be difficult but he gave us a calling he told us he was calling us all to build up zion here by accepting whatever callings come accepting wh what ward we're in uh, doing our part to build up those units and then we were to tell our friends, and here I am telling it on your post, on your YouTube channel, tell your friends and family to move here. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you know how that's going to affect me. It's already been, you know, affected me. Yeah. You know, and it affects me, you know, because I work with a lot of these people that want to move here. But one thing that I did want to say is that he's not just saying Nauvoo. We just develop, you know, built up branches in Iowa. And one of the couples that I worked with, uh, when they called me, they said they had called the state president and asked the state president where they were needed because the spirit told them they needed to move here, but they wanted to know where they were needed. And he told them Burlington, which is also on the other side, just a little further north. I think I'm right. And, uh, and, Fort Madison and Keokuk, that those were the areas that they were needed. And so I helped them find a house in Fort Madison. And um, and he and I both had a similar experience in the temple where we read the same scripture, section 125 of the Doctrine and Covenants. If anybody wants to look it up, it talks about building up Iowa. And, but that was during the time that the saints were here. Um, and so it may still have application for our day. Um, and that's what I, you know, felt anyway. Uh, since I'm going to be working with people, I thought it might be information that I needed to know. And along with, uh, I, you know, people moving here, and I've already been working with a lot of people moving within the area and moving into the area. I, I've noticed some interesting things. I'm in a really interesting position I, you know, to see some things that other people aren't seeing because I'm a real estate agent. Mm -hmm. And one thing I'm seeing is that, you know, the faith that people, you know, are, are moving here. But um, I, I'm also seeing a lot of fear. Uh and I and I find myself having discussions with people. We talk about their fears and uh, and and we have to continually remind ourselves that we can't have faith and fear at the same time. That if this is what the Lord wants you to do, it may not fall into place, and it doesn't for everyone. A lot of people I work with, uh, this cup, this couple I was telling you about that asked the state president where he should move. The first house they put an offer on, it, they had to let it go because, and they really, really wanted it. They had to let it go because uh, they hadn't sold their house yet. And they said the houses had been selling so fast in their area. And all of a sudden they weren't selling and they couldn't sell their house. So they finally did sell their house and they put an offer on a different house, which I think was better for them in the long run. I think they feel that too. And it was closer to the chapel and uh, in a good area. So um, it's interesting to, to see the Lord work in other people's lives 
and uh so do you like you think that that's or you have you noticed that that's one of the the common denominators between these members of the church that are moving here like they're feeling that they should be here for spiritual reasons because they were they were prompted to move to this area yeah most of them were prompted to move here uh uh they'll all say it they'll, they'll all say um w when you ask them why are you here and they said the lord told us to come <laughs> and uh and we're learning why and and none of us are perfect people none of us are really great people and i think uh, the old adage that I've grown up with in the church was, you know, some people are called to do things to be tried and others are called to do things to try other people. <laughs> and um, it's all. And so one thing that I have said a lot, a lot as a real estate agent lately, and who knew I, I'd be saying this is it's not about selling real estate. Um, this is not about necessarily moving here. It's all of these experiences like that derecho um, and all the things that happen to us are to help us to change, to help us to become better people. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I mentioned to you that I'm writing a book. And I started writing this book several years ago, quite a few years ago. And as a matter of fact, I just got the finished transcript back today. Oh. But anyway, the reason why I wrote it is because I was praying about having more faith and charity because I felt like those were so important. And, and as our country had started to become more contentious and there was, uh, it was hard for me to know how to vote, who to vote for, uh, because I didn't want to vote for anybody that was squabbling. I didn't want to vote for anybody that was being contentious. I didn't see the spirit there. And, and so I did a lot of praying and pondering and I had the idea to write this book and I started uh, I I started researching and I came across a period that I wasn't aware of and lots of other people are in the 1640s in England they were fighting over Christmas literally and uh and they they had a war and it, there were other things, but that was a big part of it. And what I saw in studying about that time period was that the Puritans were so uh, sure that they were right about everything. Like we are sometimes as members of the church. You know, that's what I saw. I saw that we think we're so right about everything that we kind of force it on other people. We push it at other people um, or, or fight over it. And we have contention within the church. And, and I, there's no, there was no surprise to me this last conference when that whole Sunday morning session, there were three talks, you know, especially the prophets about contention. Yeah. Um, and being peacemakers. And, and so I just felt like as part of my journey, I wanted to write this book. Well, it ended up, it's, it's a, I call it a, uh, a fan. Uh, what did, I can't even, can't even think. Uh, anyway, a fan, a historical fantasy fiction. There you go. Historical fantasy fiction. And, but the purpose of it was to help me as I processed and tried to change myself so that I could see in myself the pride that maybe maybe that President Benson used to talk about. You know, am mm -hmm. I so proud that I have to be right? I uh, I find found that I stopped arguing with my children, my wayward children. Um, that I stopped arguing with them, and I stopped arguing with other people. Um, I, there, there was a lot of contention between our church and other churches on grace versus works. And uh, 
And I think sometimes in the church, we think if we're doing this list of things that we're all good, but that's no different from other churches saying it's by, sorry, we're saying it is by our works. <clears throat> that, but that wasn't the point I was making. Um, yeah, I yeah, they have to have you both the spirit, the spirit and the letter of the law. It's both, and there is right. grace, but in the in the fact that Christ saves, <clears throat> the Lord saves all His handiwork in a kingdom of glory. So there is grace, but you do still have to. Um, but I, I, that's what I was going to say. The, it's yeah. the works that, okay, that was where I was going. Thank you. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of works that we're doing. It's uh, it's not just doing those list of things. It's how we're doing it. It's changing ourselves so that we're doing everything we do the, by the first commandment, which yeah. is to love God and the second commandment, which is to love everyone else yeah so and in other words to basically live actually live it make those things part of you and not just do it in a dead way exactly we we can't just be going to the temple and that's going to take care of us i mean i can be going to and i know people that go to the temple all the time i even saw someone in the temple one day that a, a man was having a hard time getting his things put on and two men reached out to help him and he slapped their hands away. <laughs> All right. And so, uh, and I, you know, maybe I shouldn't have said that it, it's judgmental because we don't know. Uh, and that's something I'm working on too. You know, how much of that kind of thing do we share? Uh, because you don't know everyone's circumstances. We can't judge. And all we can do is look at ourselves and say, Oh, how can I love them anyway? They must be having a hard time. There's something that we don't know about them or their situation. And people just need us to, to listen and to be the savior for them, you know, at that moment. Yeah. Do what the savior would want you to do. So what's the name of the book uh, or what do you have a name picked out for it? Oh yeah. It's called uh, becoming mother Christmas, nothing becoming to do mother. with Santa Claus. All right. Well, whenever that gets published, let me know. And then I can okay, uh, put the thanks. link for it or like a way to purchase it in a future. Oh, that's video. nice of you. Thank you very much. Of course. Um, but yeah, th there's, I don't know. I tend to think that what I've seen here in Kansas, uh, I, I mean, I'm one of these people that it's not like I felt like I needed to come here. It's just kind of that circumstances brought me here because nowhere west of Kansas was affordable. Um, and I was actually first looking at uh, Texas. And then after that, we were looking at Missouri, but then we landed on Kansas. And it was after the fact that I was like, you know what? I think there might be a reason why we're coming this direction. And I think that this same thing is playing out with many other people, including people going to Nauvoo. And the, and the, I'm sure this is not the only gathering place where we wouldn't be building temples all over the world. Yeah. You know, but it, it's a gathering place for those who the spirit speaks to to gather. Ultimately, you know, uh whenever the center place, New Jerusalem is actually built up, it's going to be one of the two world capitals and I can imagine that places like Nauvoo uh, will probably play a prominent role just because of the history of Nauvoo and, um, you know, the temple and, and how the, it was at one time the headquarters of the church. I, I could see that it would probably play a prominent role in the millennium. I, I don't know how society and cities are going to be structured at that time, but in the abstract, I think we could like picture Nauvoo you know, being an important place. And so maybe there is a need for more people to be coming there or people coming to Kansas or, you know, because like uh, before recent times, uh, it seems like, yeah, you could find Latter-day Saints throughout the world, but just such a heavy, heavy concentration in Idaho, Utah, Arizona, parts of California and stuff like that. And so maybe now's the time maybe the lord's kind of like signaling to people okay I, I, we need to start building up this part of uh yeah you know and the vineyard he knows he knows he knows his reasons 
Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I don't need to know. I just know that this has been a healing place. A lot of people that are here say that, that since they've been here, they have healed. And I feel that way myself from some things that I've healed. Uh, but also, I do want to say, if you're looking to move and you just have to be in Nauvoo, good luck with that, because every the, every time a house hits the market, it's gone. And right now, there might be two houses on the market again, and I don't expect them to be on the market very long. So you might think about, does the Lord want you on the Iowa side of the river? <laughs> yeah. Or Lord. further out. Further out, Macomb, Macomb is an area that the state president mentioned needs building up. That's where he lives. It's almost an hour away. Or even places even farther out, maybe Nebraska, maybe uh, Missouri, maybe Kansas, maybe right. Arkansas, just the Midwest in general. I don't know. Good point. But, Good point. Yeah. I'm not so sure. I, I think this is uh, we're living in interesting times. I, I I don't know. I don't have a way to know for sure, but it seems like this is a more recent uh, phenomenon just based on talking to people. It seems like it's more of a a recent thing. So maybe that's kind of exciting and maybe it's a, it's a, um, you know, uh, the next step in the process, you know, for preparing for the second coming. I don't know. They're preparing for the second coming, you know, and I know that's what this YouTube channel is all about. And I told you, I listen to it every day, but I can't, (laughs) I can't get all, I can't get all of them in the length of time that I have. There's no way. And I, and I realize that I just, I put it out there. You just pick and choose whatever sounds interesting. And I, so I do listen to them and I think that what you're doing is important, you know, part of preparing for, as I thought about that, preparing for the second coming, uh, the thing that you're doing with the Book of Mormon, wow, that, I know, I, that is doing your part. I, if you yeah. don't do anything else, you know, that is yeah. doing your part because getting people to read the Book of Mormon is essential and us doing it on a daily basis, even though like I, I would read my Come Follow Me every day but i also read a chapter in the book of mormon every day um it is so important and i see the difference in my life because i do that um but i looked uh in preparation for this because that's where my thoughts are the other part of preparing for the second coming being a people prepared for the second coming um is not only uh, watching for it and, and being prepared for the hardships to come and having faith and all that. But what I was talking about earlier, um, he wants us to be a holy people. Mm-hmm. Um, the city of Enoch went up because they were holy. And we're supposed to have a city like that prepared for him to come to. So we have to be focused on becoming holy. We have to be focused on changing ourselves, allowing the hard things that happen to us make us better. Um, Learning to get along with people and not argue is is more important than we realize or the prophet wouldn't have talked about it because that's not love. And I think revisiting that talk alone i have listened to it over and over and over again and the other ones in there too uh uh, elder uh christopherson and what was the other one but anyway those two especially um are talking about being peacemakers and and if you read some of the other things in there you'll hear uh the you know what the and especially listen to the spirit what the spirit is trying to tell yeah Like I've said a number of times on my channel, it's all great, you know, watching this channel, uh, watching for signs of the time. That, that's good. We should be watching for signs of the times. But what good is it going to do you if you're if you're not uh, living a Zion life? And we're none of us are perfect, but um, there are things required of us. We need to be on the covenant path for one, doing the works, but we also have to actually be uh, like what Elaine is saying. We have to actually be those principles ourself uh charity kindness patience love all, all, the whole the whole list we got to try and do that and a big part of that is how we treat our fellow man and it's hard it's hard but 
you know, we can do it and we can move in that direction every single day. All right. Well, I think that's going to be it for this one. So thank you, Elaine, for sharing that story. Thank it's you amazing. so much. Yeah. People need to hear it, you know, and it, it was good reading it in that news article. But I think that this what we did here gives it more life and ho hopefully more people will kind of like really realize what happened. And um, I hope everything goes well for you and anybody else that had damaged property. Um, I hope <laughs> I hope that you recover. I'm just like thinking about my own property yeah, that it, happened here. We're still not cleaned up from it. We, we, work, we work constantly and we can't get it done because we have other things going on. And so we're just doing it a little bit at a time. Just a long-term project. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thanks again. Thank um, you so much. You guys, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Uh, and then as soon as I have a link to purchase her book, I'll, I'll make mention of that Thank in a future you. video. Thank Talk you to you guys so later. Much. Thank you, Elaine. Thank you. Bye-bye.